get ready to enter the vortex. Starring Vandita. <laughs> okay. Hi, and welcome to episode number six of the show. Um, got lots of announcements because it's been a while since I taped my last show, so um, on with the show. Okay, um, we have some new viewers, so let's welcome them. There's Kathy Murphy from my cardio class. Hi, Kathy. There's somebody named Jeff Connor who sent me some email. Hi, Jeff. Don't know who you are. And my neighbor, Cal. Hey, Cal. Nice job on the trees, dude. Okay. And I also ran into my first fan, well not ran into them, but we were both pumping gas at the same gas station, and it's a gentleman by the name of Charlie Dupree, who happens to be one of our illustrious postal workers in Mountain View, and recognized my name from my license plate, which is on my car, duh, um, well maybe not duh, anyway, I was lucky enough to get it, so I did. Um, it's kind of like that Cheech and Chong episode where the cop asks him for his driver's license and he says, isn't it back there in the bumper? I don't get it. Okay, um, but he started, this guy Charlie, hey Charlie, he's really cool and he started like singing my name and like was trying to tell me I should run for president, which I'd love to but I can't because I wasn't born in this country. But I am legit to be here and everything. Or maybe I'm too illegit to be here, I don't know. So, um... Anyway, so I said, but you can nominate me for Secretary of State, maybe uh, Chief of Staff, Ambassador to Luxembourg is what I'm really looking for in a future job position, because it's really cool now, I'll drive Jaguars over there, and they have really cool stores there. And it's like Luxembourg, you live in Luxembourg, Luxembourg. Okay, that's a lot of fun. Alright, um, so we're going to read some viewer mail, uh, which I've gotten, but unfortunately my server was down. And uh, so I couldn't access my mail on my Vandita um, Are you account. sure you didn't mean your servant was down? I have an, an idiot for help staff here, and he just doesn't seem to recognize that I need things to work. So I have a new computer now, and I think things are working, except it makes a funny noise. But anyway, on with the mail. Alright, let me see here. Okay. Okay, this is from uh, Mr. J. Banks, who did give me permission to read his mail on the air, unlike the other people who I said hello to, who didn't give me permission. But, um, okay, this is regarding the Laminator episode, considered a classic by many. Naked coed laminating indeed. I told my tiny wife Robin, is she like tiny, tiny? Uh, anyway, um, that you are being funny on purpose, and I think when I show her this tape, I will be vindicated. Yes, I'm being funny. Okay, I don't smile because my mouth formations like this, and so it doesn't naturally lend itself to like smiling. But when I can gather up some money, I'll get some plastic surgery or something, so I look like I'm permanently smiling and scared all at the same time. But for now, you'll just have to deal with the fact that it's sort of deadpan delivery, like Stephen Wright or somebody, but it's meant to be funny, and if you take it a little too seriously, you're taking me too seriously, and yourself far more seriously than you should. Alright, uh, you're a little disorganized at the beginning, Laminator Show. Yes, it's true, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, but hey, the time flew by, and I liked your elliptical, philosophical asides. Thank you. Like, somebody didn't like them. We'll get to that person's mail in a minute. Um, that cameraman here should be kept under strict control. I totally, so totally agree. And he's like laughing at me and doubled over with his like five tires of stomach. And like all bent over and hunched up. Okay. Only three comments per show. You hear that? Three comments per show from the cameraman. 
I agree completely on one main topic and ridiculous depth. Ridiculous, funny, haha, ridiculous depth. That's the intention of the show. Okay, you're on the money, keep up the good work. Yes, and if you know anybody in Hollywood, just let them know I'm here. Alright, okay. Um, How about just somebody with money? So, uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Banks, or some VC funding, I could really use like some money. Anyway, thank you for all the kind love. This is my letter I sent to them. Please accept my apologies regarding my delayed response. Uh, but I only recently have my computer fixed, and um, I asked them permission to read their mail. And if they have a question, feel free to email me. Um, anybody, if you have a question on something that's an immediate need for you now, feel free to send me an email, and I will respond to you via email. Um, and if you don't want your name or your letter read on the air, let me know that also. Um, but obviously, if you're sending mail to a show, we're going to read mail. Oh, by the way, the segment is called, It's in the Bag, Baby, because the mail bag. And since I have, like, postal people as fans, I thought that's even, like, way more appropriate. Okie dokie. Alright. Yeah, I think I may have deleted the other message. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. You mean that really kind one that came in? <laughs> Well, that was for the second show, but the first one um, that the Bankses saw, I guess that's her name, um, was on uh, my folding episode. And first he was going to call his wife over to say that um, uh, it was really weird and stupid and boring. But then he realized that there were some little humorous asides, like the tuba tummy um, comment and lining your, ba or your trash cans with seven bags so you don't have to, like, keep having trash cans with no plastic bags in them, and so on and so forth, which are really, truly our time savers, and, um, well, this isn't just a show, it's a way of life for me. So it, you know, hey, if you don't like it, you don't gotta do it, but, you know, whatever. If it's entertaining to you, also, that's good. If you laugh at me, or laugh at people I laugh at, as long as you laugh, and you learn something, I think you can do it. All right. Now for some not so pleasant mail from a certain viewer named Raina Antle. Okay, first of all, what kind of name is Raina Antle? I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a, a name. I think it's a girl though. All right. I just turned on my television, and fortunately for me, only caught the last five minutes of your pathetic show. Okay. That would probably be just the credits, wouldn't it? <laughs> Are you for real? Yes, I'm, I'm real. Ow, okay, I'm real. Um, at first I thought it was just a joke. It is. But Go then with I those first instincts. You're actually serious. No, my dear, I'm serious in that you should be organized and you can learn a thing or two, but if you don't think you can apply it to your daily life, then yes, it's a joke. Alright, I almost can't believe how ridiculous you are. How does one go on like you? I will go on. <laughs> On and on and on. Oh, I don't sing did that song you, from Titanic. Did you do a line of crystal for the show? I'm not telling. Or did you just get really stoned? I'm not telling. It's like Peg Bundy meets me with some butthead. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, Julio, I need TP for my phone. Okay. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Yes, I am an original. <laughs> and your views on recycling and waste and water are just so completely apathetic, misinformed, and lame. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I think can't your even message believe. is getting out. You're for real. Okay. Yeah, I'm for real. You already wrote that. Okay. Um, if everybody decided to use paper and plastic every day, our planet Earth would be even more of a disaster than it is already. What environmental stone did you crawl out from under? Okay. <laughs> you obviously have no respect for future human beings. Yeah, that's true, but I do have respect for my current human beings that are with me. Or the ground we walk on. That is so not true. Okay. Um, basically, you're apathetic and lazy. Yeah, I'm lazy, but that's why I try to be efficient. I'm not apathetic. I do volunteer for stuff, and I'm part of the community emergency response team, as well as having attended the police academy here, and I'm very, very civic-minded. So, whatever. And you don't want to do dishes. It is true. When I was growing up, I cleaned the table. My sister did dishes. That's why my hands are so lovely and beautiful now and all cut up. But, um, 
yeah, I don't really like doing dishes. What can I say? Um, so you hide behind your whole stupid drought theory of not wasting water. Yeah, it's a theory, but it's part of my unified field theory of being anal and retentive all at once and being a housewife. Okay, nice try. That's the, nice try. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me why our world is the way it is. So, I'm like totally responsible for everything that's happened to this, like, thing. Alright, so I told her to go, like, you know, You're not allowed do to something to herself. Um, you, you know, whatever. I used some very choice four-letter words. I thought one of them had five. Anyway. Yes, the word for female dog. Yes. In yes. any case. In any case. So then I re then she replied to me. And she's replying to me, which is very interesting, because if you really hate me, like, you wouldn't waste your time. It yeah. took you long enough to come up with that clever, intelligent response. Okay. So the saga continues. And then I write back. Not really. Just the first words that came to mind when I think of whining Bay Area residents such as yourself. I would have replied sooner, but my server was down. My server or servant was, yes, out of the country. And out of his mind. That too. Okay, so my latest letter I've sent now is, okay, why don't you get back to your home country of I am politically correct and stop watching my show. If you really don't like it, just skip it. And if you really don't want to get, you know, cable, TCI cable, get DSS. I, in fact, have a DSS dish, and so I don't even get my own show in my own house, which is actually really quite sad, if you think about it. But that is a good way not to get Channel 6. Or, okay, you're obviously intrigued enough to watch my show many times and to keep sending me these inane and pithy little notes. So I must ask you, what gives you the right to so thoroughly denounce me and my show? I can live wherever I choose. Oh, because then she writes, maybe you should move back. I don't know, sorry. I, I missed the note. First of all, anyone who takes 15 minutes to explain how to follow the sheet is a moron? Perhaps. I may already be a moron. I don't know. Anyone who puts their home address and phone number on the web is an even bigger moron. Yes, I am bigger and a badder web moron than thou art. Test. If you don't so, like us whining bigger residents, then maybe you should go back to Ohio or Texas. And I contemplate and ponder that question every single day of my life. But gosh darn it, the weather isn't just a little better here than over there. Um, however, I am thinking of moving to L.A., which is where superficial people like me really belong. And they, they totally waste water there. I mean, if you think I'm bad, go down to L.A. They flush their toilets a lot of times during the drought. The alleged drought. Okay, so back to my letter. Um, I can live wherever I choose. This is true. It's a free country. And so can you. Mountain Hood does not need residents like you on their high horses. Yes, we are a grounded community, very ethnically and financially diverse. And I really enjoy that. I love this city, and that's why I want to give back and, and do things with the city, which I think is great. I love the city, and I don't have a view of any mountains, but I still like it anyway. Um, perhaps you should move to Shallow Alto. That seems to be much of your style. Yes, shallow Eltons are the ones who drive Volvos and, like, you know, criticize people who drive nicer cars than they do because they're just secretly jealous and bitter. And plus, they don't feel that they deserve all the millions of dollars that they made, like, on stock options. Okay. Um, and my webpage is for me. I can place whatever information I like on my page. Yes, First Amendment, freedom of speech. You can reserve your own domain name. That is, if you know how and can afford it. Anybody can reserve a domain name. It actually only costs, what, 35 bucks a year? Yeah, okay. And tell everybody how much you dislike me. Yes, if you don't like me, you can like advertise it on the web. You can buy like a $15,000 billboard, but that's just advertising for my show, so whatever. Uh, or since you do know my address, why don't you stalk me and I'll stop a receiving order on you so fast your head will rotate on its axis. You know, Linda Blair from Exorcist. Okay. Stop sending me email. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yes, you can send me fan mail or funny letters or questions. Do not send me hate mail. That's very poor taste, okay? Actually, I found the hate mail will be the most amusing of all the things you received. <laughs> Don't send me hate mail. Didn't your mothers tell you this? Okay. And if you can't take a joke, then maybe you are the one who needs some drugs, prescription, and otherwise. Not me. I don't know any doctors who can write scripts for you, or like, you know, and I'm sort of between drug dealers myself, so I don't know what to tell you, but 
since you know the drug names, you probably know where to get them too. All right, now set on the It's in the Bag Baby. We're now going to move to the bathroom and uh, look at cleaning our toilets. Do you need me to mess the toilet up first? No, it's been pre-sprinkled for my convenience. Okay. Those dirty rings! How will I ever get them out? Okay, toilet cleaning is not the most pleasant thing, but I was asked by one of my viewers if I would cover more basic things and not the lofty things like laminating and folding sheets. So we're going to get down to the dirty, the toilet, that unfeng shui area of your house. <sighs> Alright, you probably want to wear gloves. I never really do. Maybe your hands wouldn't have that big band-aid on it if you'd wear gloves when handling toxic chemicals. Sit. Okay, as you can see, there's a few little tiny stained things here. So, what you do is you get whatever toilet bowl cleaner you have. I really think I should mess that toilet up first, Randita. I think it would just really go Look, so much better. Look, this is not a five senses show, so you don't get smell o vision at home. Unless you want to go to each and every person's house and smell up their toilets, but then you'd be pulling at Jason. I was <laughs> just going to say I could send my brother Jason. <laughs> Alright, so you spray this around, and if you have two toilets, it's as easy to clean two toilets as it is to clean one. So, you let this soak for a little bit, and I only use one brush. I never use the same thing twice. Because this is a bacteria infestation love fest, okay? So. But wouldn't that be wasteful to throw away that sponge? Think why, of, yes, Bob, it would. Think but of, wait, I get more wasteful than that. It's just not cleanly and hygienically correct. And the one thing is, I will always pick hygiene and cleanliness over the environment. So, anything like this, there's really cheap disposable ones. Um, I'm a real fan of the OXO Good Grips people, and I like to standardize on one or two or three or four or five brands of, of stuff. And they have a web page. Um. Oops, that wasn't me, that was just punch. <laughs> and you just want to scrub, scrub all the way in. Okay? And then you, whoops, I <laughs> lost this punch. All right, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Oops. Well, anyway, it was mostly done. Then, and, and you can use like another kind of cleaning product here, but um, the reason they have these bathroom cleaners because they really do make this like porcelain ceramic stuff really clean. So, um, and in order not to spray the walls, I will spray it onto a paper towel again because it's clean and it's disposable and wasteful. And you just wipe around. And again, remember, you can do both toilets at once. There is absolutely no reason that you just need to clean one. And I wait until I've had a couple of guests before I clean the guest bathroom, and then I clean mine. And again, this is really, it doesn't, every other week activity. And I'll show you sometime my schedule of household activities, which you can, you can just put them on a schedule. You don't have to do every one of them every day. Unless, of course, you use dishes and not disposable paper. And you want to wash here, okay? And what you want to do with the brass is just sort of, you know, work it over. And the little holes on here, these guys, put a little Q-tip in them. In case, like, there's some backsplash. That's my next movie, Backsplash. <laughs> okay. And just spray a little bit, okay? And you're going to do that on the lid as well. Now, isn't that a toxic chemical? I mean, the next time one of our guests sits down, won't they, like, you know, get ring around the butt or something? They're lucky I just don't send their sorry asses to the Taco Bell. All right. So then that's done. And what you want to do before you um, flush the blue stuff, because I don't really like to flush more than once if I can avoid it when I'm cleaning, is lift the lid. And what you're going to do is you're going to put like these, um, like they have toilet docks or something like this. I don't like um, 
doing anything in blue water, so I like my cleanly tablets to be white. I like to see what I've produced, I guess. All right. And um, the other thing I've done, because um, I didn't like the handle, and it was really old and grody, so um, I had a plumber come in and put new fixtures in. So now all my like innards of the toilet are nice and clean. And I was just so proud of myself for doing this. Anyway, and you can put one of these guys in, and there's rust from the toilet bolts. For some reason, the plumbing industry really messed up and put metal bolts to put this thing with this thing. All right. So we already had one in there, which was um, not really very used. So we can flush this. And let me give you a little tip. As a good hostess, you always want to triangulate your toilet paper. And all you need to do is go like this. So you get this, and then you do that. Yeah. Not so easy to do, holding it. And then you fold it back over itself. But it's just a, a nice little touch as a hostess. And I'm sure a lot of you are having guests um, over the holidays. And look. A beautiful little pointed corner. Also, it's rather handy because if, for example, you go out of town and then your spouse has, say, some unexpected guests over, you'll know that someone has used. And years ago, the I watched. I watch a lot of TV, like you can't tell. Um, I watched an Archie Bunker episode, and Archie said to Edith, "Over, not under." So my toilet rolls always go over, not under. It's much handier, much more efficient that way. Okay, how are we doing on time there? Oh, we got about eight minutes, seven minutes left. Okay, perfect. Um, in my next show, I'm going to do a tub, but let me um, give you some nice little things. I'm sorry, I'm not being very camera friendly, bending over and stuff. Anyway, um, what I'm doing is I'm creating a little list of rules for the bathroom, for the bathroom, and I'm going to put them in this picture frame here which will, of course, and the list will be nicely laminated and so on. But what I'm trying to do is be more efficient with my guests. One of the things I've done is I've put a little restroom, man or woman sign, and it's for the blind also, <laughs> so they can find it because this house has a lot of doors and for that reason, people get very confused, and I think I must have a lot of idiots as friends, or something, because they're always like, Can we "Not anymore! Find the not after they see this episode." Luckily, none of them live in this city; they've all moved out. <laughs> but uh, whatever. Do you want to like get the phone or something? Oh, let's just let it ring. All right, Mom, I'm trying to tape my shoe. Okay. This list is in particular for somebody named Jason. Jason, yo, here's some rules for the bathroom. Please make sure all your stuff leaves the toilet. In other words, don't put the lid down and think that all your crap is gone if it's not gone. All right. If you need to flush twice, please do so. It's better than leaving skid marks for the next person to use as a directional vehicle. By the way, on that flushing twice thing, it helps if you wait in between because like, you know, yeah, you let I the mean, tank there's, fill there's up. the laws of plumbing, okay? The tank has to fill back up. And you'll hear it go Shh, and then it'll stop. And hold the handle down until you see your stuff disappear magically into the plumbing void. Okay, if you make a big sink, use the Calvin Klein air freshener on the sink or any air freshener you have. Please put both the seat and cover down before you leave. This is for gents and ladies. Um, this is easy to pull the lid up, do your thing, and put it down, as it is to do it like this. It also contains odors, keeps cats from falling into the toilet bowl, as they are known to do, and um, other such uh, perils of the household. Okay. I've also given some directions on operating light switches, um, if you use a, you know, one of these hand sanitizers, you don't need to use water. This is just an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. This, even though it says acne wash, can be used on hands because 
Soap is soap. And if your hands get dry, lotion. And again, you want to be a good hostess to your guests. And to that end, I try to provide everything that they might need, as well as providing them direction, which makes my life a little easier when I clean up after them. Uh, okay. Um, also, always provide additional toilet paper in a location visible to your guests. I have some right here. If they should run out, although I try to make sure there's always a full roll here, um, but that way they can grab some extra. There's also Kleenex available if they need extra help. It also is much better than them using like the guest towels if they run out of paper. Yes, leave no skid marks on my guest towels, please. All my towels are beige. I'm a very beige person. My car is like an off-white. Uh, my curtains are beige. Carpets are beige. But it makes the area more open. All right. Fingertip towels, hand towels. Um, okay, if you're a guy, please wipe, don't shake. Shaking leaves little droplets of things everywhere. <laughs> and I'm always finding them in the oddest locations. So. Wipe, don't shake. That's what toilet paper's here for. I would completely disagree with this part of the show. Then you may go to the Taco Bell down the road. Okay. And if you have to do something really messy, please go to the Taco Bell down the road. <laughs> to a public toilet, just not mine. And if you're calling from your cell phone in your car on my driveway, and you come inside and you use the bathroom, that is not appropriate. I think that really only refers to one of your viewers. Jason! <laughs> Jason is not only a friend, he's also a relative, so, and he knows, I've told him his little issues, so now he like tries to go before he comes home, comes here. I heard okay. they start to close the Taco Bell when they see him pulling in these days. I think they do. Okay, also, try not to spray the entire toilet with yellow stuff, okay? It's not like a little contest of, you know, let's draw a figure eight or something, so just aim in the center. Try not to backsplash. Basics. Okay. If you do, perchance, dribble or splash or whatever water sports you're doing in here, please wipe it up. Yellow on white is very noticeable. Wipe it up. Okay. Kleenex here, like I said. Little cups if you need to drink some water. Washcloths. And again, if you need anything and you are at somebody else's house, let the staff or management, no. And, and that really is best for everybody. And that's just, it's a nice thing to do as a guest. You want to be thoughtful of your, um, the proprietress and the proprietor of House of Wilson. So, I think that's all the time we have for today because my cameraman is making finger gesticulations at me. Yes. And um, I will see you guys next time. This is the Inland Tender Housewife saying that's my line and I'm doing it.